Okay, so, hey everyone, um, my name is Z Butango and I've been ghosted. I've been ghosted. I've been ghosted. Something for your, for your, for your fire. So, what's up everyone? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Pumzi David Z Butango, but you can call me Z Love. If you're new here, please go down below, hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell so YouTube can notify you every time that I post a video. I'm doing this new thing of posting a new video every week now, so child, y'all better hit that subscribe button before y'all miss out. If you're a returning subscriber, a regular motherfucking regular day one lover, I want to say thank you so, so much for coming back and watching today's video. Well, today's video is quite different. I will be doing a story time about how I got ghosted or when I realized that I have been ghosted because child took me some time to realize that shit. Being ghosted is something that I never thought would happen to me, I guess, because it's something that I've always seen as stupid because why the hell would you disappear out of someone's life when you are the one who let yourself in in the first place? So, yeah, let's... Yo, know, this, this story is just traumatizing me. Okay, so I met this boy. Yeah, this boy. I can't call him a man after what he did. I met this boy last year. Actually, my first introduction to him was back in 2019. He was, is still a friend of a friend. So I met him in 2019. Never paid much attention to him. Never even looked in his direction. Wouldn't even think twice about him on my normal day. So I met him officially last year, around, it was around July, and that time I bumped into him in Cape Town. I was surprised that he lives in Cape Town because when I first met him, it was here in Port Elizabeth. Fine, we kick off our friendship, we exchange numbers at the shopping mall, and, you know, we start becoming friends without our mutual friend. And things were going great, things were going so well between us as friends, obviously. It wasn't until towards the end of August last year where he said something along the lines of come get this dick it was along those lines he didn't exactly say it like that but it was something along those lines and that's when I asked questions by yo dude are you actually you know gay and shit he confirmed yes he was but not everyone knew so you guess he was or not really now I guess at then he was still in the closet so for me, closet niggas were a no-no. Niggas on the DL were a no-no because I've been through my own fair share. And if you guys want to know the stories, just you know where to find my videos. Um, okay, so I came back to Port Elizabeth um, in October. I had to shoot a film that I, I spoke to you guys about in the previous video. I had to come back to PE to shoot a film and... During that time of me being on set and I was busy so obviously I didn't have time to see him even though we always made plans of meeting each other and actually spending some time together. That didn't happen. I only saw him on my last day in PE. It was literally my last two hours before I departed. Bumped into him. We risked it by consummating our, I guess I could say friendship our relationship we consummated the relationship <laughs> used the last few hours we had left I went back to Cape Town he remained here uh, that was in November because I stayed the whole month of October shooting and then in November when I was leaving I bumped into him and you know we dabbled in some shit okay fine now I'm starting to see him as someone of interest now I'm starting to see him as someone that I could you know potentially be with fine fast forward to December he's in Cape Town I'm in Cape Town I'm home alone and by that time I was very skeptical about relationships very skeptical about getting into anything with anyone because if you remember I said something last about in my last video about me being in a situation last year I had just came out of something that took me a very long time to heal from so Jumping into the next thing was really an, a no-go area for me. I just didn't want to 
pursue anything with anyone at that time. So December is in Cape Town, he's always trying to meet up with me, he's always trying to have sleepovers and shit, but I'm, I'm just not having it. Not that I'm not having it, I wanted those things to happen, but any time, like, every time it got closer to that time of him coming over, I would just shy away, I would just make up an excuse, or I would just fall asleep. Just anything to escape from seeing him. It was never really about him, it was, it was about me and my fears and my insecurities and my hurt from the previous situation I was coming out from. So I wasn't really ready to do or start anything with anyone. But the guy was very patient with me. That, that's the one thing that I really, really loved about him at that time was the fact that he was patient. He never gave up. Some people would try once or twice and then after they'd be like, I fuck you, you wanna be with me, I'm out the picture. But he didn't do that. He sticked around. I remember we used to spend so much time together during December, during the day actually. We would chill at the park, we'd smoke, we'd drink, we'd talk, play pool. Like it was really nice spending time with him. That's how I grew fond of him. That's how I started seeing him as someone of potential. Little did I know that the guy just wanted what he wanted. So fast forward now to January. I think it's January the 3rd. Yes, um, January the 3rd, I had already drawn up my vision board. And I, one of the things that I manifested for myself this year was a good and healthy relationship. Okay, so I thought the universe, one way or another, had brought me this guy just to get me over, not get me over the previous guy, but to, to be there through my healing journey and be my, you know, Mr. Right. But the guy showed me flames, hey. So I asked him out on the 3rd of January, um, we talked about it actually, it wasn't an immediate yes, let's go out, no, we actually spoke about, about what we want from this relationship, what we're looking for, what we've experienced and what we would like not to experience again. You know, it was a very good and cordial conversation and really loved it because it was a very mature thing of him and that's one other thing I really loved. It's much worse fuck. So we agree on our terms, I guess. It's like we drew up a contract or something, but a verbal one. We, we understood one another, we understood what we wanted from one another and what we wanted out of the relationship. Right? Um after I asked him out, obviously we spent more time together and now I'm starting to introduce him to people that I really love, people that are dear to my heart, so I introduced them to my best friend. Only to find out they really knew each other from back in the day. I introduced him to my brother, I introduced him to my other friends as well in Cape Town. It wasn't until, my first red flag, I guess I'd say was when, was when he left Cape Town without telling me. That was in January. He literally up and lived. I met him on on the weekend, right? We had fun, we were drinking, having fun with my friends and his cousin. And then two days later, I get a text from him saying, Oh, he's in Port Elizabeth. And I'm out there like, whoa. You literally packed your bags, booked a ticket, and left settled down and then only thought of thought of telling me that you were actually in a different province it was my first red flag and i was pissed i i remember when he told me i was drinking and i was drunk i remember feeling so so fucking pissed that i switched off my phone that i didn't i didn't want to communicate with him i didn't want to entertain i didn't want to i didn't just want to talk to him right fine that was my first red flag and I ignored it, not ignored it, I addressed it and obviously he obviously made an excuse, a lame ass excuse. Fine, I forgive that, we move on. I remember talking to a friend of mine about it and she was like, yeah, I understand you're pissed, but that does not call for a breakup. 
and one thing about me I'm very very quick to cut people off like I'm very quick to cut people off especially when it comes to boyfriends and shit if I see that this is not going where I wanted to go or if I see this is not working out or it's not what I want it to be I find the exit because one thing I've learned from watching I think it's Ocean's Eleven George Clooney literally says whenever you enter a room make sure you have an escape plan so that's me in relationships I always make sure that I have an escape plan escape plan so with him I did not leave at that time I sticked around just to see where this is going because this is something that I manifested for myself so hoping you know I'm very hopeful that God the universe is on my side, you know. <laughs> Fine. Um, now I come to PE. I came to PE. I remember rushing to come to PE because I wanted to spend Valentine's Day here. So I got here around the 13th of February, which is four days from my birthday, a day before Valentine's Day. I came here thinking my Valentine's Day was going to be something special, you know, um, it was literally my first Valentine's Day with a boyfriend, so obviously I had expectations, I expected not just from him but from myself as well, but child, none of the things that I thought were going to happen happened, okay, so Guys, the red flags were the... How could I not have seen them? You know, you only realize that... You only realize the red flags about someone when you start explaining them to someone else. Like, oh my fucking God. So Valentine's Day comes. And... Obviously, it's my now. It's now my second night in PE, and yeah, we we didn't do anything. Like we only had sex. Like there was really nothing I could say was special about that day or anything that was romantic or anything that was or any effort that was put from his side of things. Cause I'm a hopeless romantic. I. When I love, I love, like I love wholeheartedly and I don't say I loved him, I really liked him and at that time I was willing to to do anything to see where this relationship is going but there was really no effort coming from his side now that I think about it except for the dick, that's the only thing he supplied. Fine, I forgive that and I think okay we're still broke, none of us have money at this time so we only got our money I think the following day or was it on the 14th? we got our money on the 14th but I still got nothing I still got nothing from this motherfucker whereas here I was boarding food, trying to be romantic trying to... <sighs> but I'm hard but anyway, moving on fast forward to my birthday it is now the 17th of February I'm turning 20 motherfucking two, and obviously my friends were going out. At that time, I had not introduced him to my PE friends. So when I introduced him to my friends, it wasn't a matter of, oh, hey guys, this is my boyfriend, Bali. No. I think we kissed somewhere, and then they saw, and then, you know, obviously they assumed. But I'm telling you, they were, they were all surprised by who? Well, no. no. Like, really? Like, you sure about this? Like, you, you, you are dating this person. And obviously, I paid no attention to that. I paid no mind to that because I'm the kind of person that everyone deserves. Uh, a chance at love, you know? And here I was giving him this chance at love. Not just giving him, but giving myself as well because as many times as I've been hurt, I don't want to give up on love because once you start closing yourself off to that experience it just becomes a very long and boring life for you so 
always opening up myself, always forcing myself to open up to people. You know, so here I was opening up to this guy, trying to make him my guy. So fast forward to sorry not fast forward, it's still my birthday. We go out with my friends. It's a lovely night. Um it's literally a lovely night and we come after my birthday party, we come back to my place and obviously I get some good ass bomb birthday six and the next morning I accompany him back to his place and I have not seen him since that day. Like no communication whatsoever. No phone calls, no no texts via Facebook, literally nothing. Like the last day I saw this guy was the 18th of February, which was the day after my birthday. And apparently this is someone who was my boyfriend. I, I don't lie, at first I was I was upset. Not upset, I was I was in disbelief um, in the first week. I'm like, okay, a week has gone by and this guy still not texted me. What the fuck is going on? Is he okay? Is he alive wherever he is? Because we live in South Africa and homophobic attacks are not so rare. So here I was worrying, okay? The first week goes by. I leave him a text. He leaves me on read, right? When he left me on read, I knew, okay, he's alive. At least he's okay wherever he is. But whatever reason he has for ignoring me like that, I have no clue. The second week goes by, I, I text him on some, I know distance makes the heart grow fonder, but mine is starting to get upset because I haven't seen you in so long. I have not communicated with you in such a very long time. He leaves me in red again. A um, few days later, I text him, we need to talk and if you can't let me read the text we need to talk and if you can't make time for me or us and then that is it he left me on read again i don't know why i did not get the hint like so this one night i went out with my friends we went out drinking and obviously I was down because I'm thinking what the hell did I do to deserve this like now I'm starting to feel bad about myself my insecurities are starting to come flooding in again and it's one thing I told myself this year that I'm not gonna beat myself up for anything I'm not gonna allow anxiety depression any of those motherfucking mental health shit to get to me so here's this boy making me, getting me in my feels now and I get to my place and I start crying. I remember calling a friend of mine who, who knows him and I'm like, can you please call him and, and check up on him if he's okay with anything. Um, she calls him, he does not pick up his phone and I'm like, okay, it's fine. If he does not pick up his phone, that's completely fine. Let's just leave it there because I didn't want to involve my friend any further than that point. I didn't tell them what was going on. My friends literally do not know what's going on. And they're gonna find out from this video, I guess. The next morning, he calls my friend and she doesn't pick up her phone either. And immediately after um, he drops the call, she calls me saying, oh, he just called me, but I did not pick up. And I'm like, great, you did, you did great. Thank you for your services. Let's just leave it there. Let's not talk about this person ever again. Let's, let's just leave it there because clearly he does not give a fuck. Right? So this guy literally disappeared for like three weeks. No communication, nothing whatsoever. So yesterday, what's the day today? Today is the 17th of March, right? Which is, which is like a month since I've seen this guy. Yesterday he texts me. Let me, let me go to his he texted me yesterday on some Z and I'm like, uh, what? Here's a chest. Oh, Z and I'm like, what? He's like, are you good? And I'm saying, I'm doing great, thanks. Good to know you're still alive, whoever you are. He's like, I've been on, 
I've been offline, I deleted my Facebook, then downloaded it again. Do you have a phone now? I have a test at what it's eleven thirty. And I'm like, okay, that's your business, it's none of mine. I don't need to know all of that information. And he's giving me all these sad emojis and shit. Like, this guy really played me. This was my response to him. Uh uh, please don't give me that. The last time I saw you was the day after my birthday, which is almost a month ago. Almost 30 fucking days, and you wanna come back here and act like you care. Please. Like, what upset me more is the fact that he had the audacity to text me again, to check up on me as if he fucking cares after disappearing for so fucking long. And one thing I know is that he's gonna watch this video and I wanna talk to you right now, motherfucker. Fuck you. Fuck you for what you did. For leaving without an explanation, for making me feel like shit about myself, for you taking advantage of me, taking advantage for my feelings, of my feelings for you. Fuck you for that. And I hope you burn in hell. I hope you do. And I hope I don't ever see you again or bump into you. And even if I do, just don't fucking talk to me. I, I feel like people who ghost people do not understand the, the psychological effects of their doings because if you are someone who's been ghosted, I'm sure you can relate to this, someone who's experienced being ghosted, you ask yourself questions such as, did I do something wrong? Like, what is it that I didn't do that made them go away? Was I not satisfactory enough in bed for them? Did I shower them with so much love that it scared them off? Did I shove my love so deep down their throats that they actually gagged and threw it up? Did I force them out of the closet? Did I make them do something? Do I make them do things they didn't want to do? Like, it's always questions about I, 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 because you are doubting yourself. I was doubting myself so many times. I was questioning myself. I was so fucking confused about what happened, where everything went wrong. Like, trying to pinpoint the turning point relationship where something might have sparked this change or you get what I'm saying? It's always questions directed towards the self. It's never questions directed to the other person. Even if, even though you're asking that person those questions, those are questions of you trying to understand what you did wrong because you don't find anything wrong with what they did, but I'm here to tell you what they did was fucking wrong. What he did to me was fucking goddamn wrong. And it pisses me off. It pisses me off. And it pisses me off because I know the hurt now, like I understand the pain and now that I've been through it, now that I'm over the pain, what pisses me off is the fact that they came back and texted me. I feel like that is why I'm making this video. I'm not going to say this was something that is part of my past because it's a recent thing, it's like a very recent thing, but I was trying to force myself to move on without actually dealing or are tracing those feelings, are tracing that confusion and that doubt and that anxiety that I had. But now I am. But now I'm really picking myself off and dusting myself off of the shit that he that he did to me. And one thing I'm not gonna allow though is to let this experience stop me from wearing my heart on my sleeves. Yes, obviously I'm gonna be more cautious because niggas ain't shit, but I'm not, allow, I'm not going to allow this experience to hinder my growth or stop me from experiencing other people. And I feel like that's where we go wrong a lot in relationships, well, after a breakup or something. We start doubting ourselves, we start closing ourselves off from experiencing love or any other relationships because we're scared of being hurt again. Yes, I am scared of being hurt again, but I'm not going to give up on love because love is a very beautiful thing once served right. Like, it's a very beautiful thing if someone serves it to you the right way. If someone loves you the way you want to be loved. If someone... It's just a beautiful thing. And if you've experienced love, you know what I'm talking about. I've experienced love. I've been hurt. I've experienced love. But I know how good it is. That is why I keep myself up. I keep dusting myself off and continuing trying to find that one person who's going to put all these puzzle pieces of my heart 
together into one and blossom, I guess. But as for that motherfucker, fuck him. I can't fuck him. So yeah guys, before I get any more upset, let me just end the video right here. I'm closing this chapter and not looking forward to my next relationship or situation or whatever happens. But I am still manifesting a good, healthy relationship. One thing, one word of advice I'll give you guys is to not close yourselves off to experiencing love. As hurtful as it is, it's an experience and every experience is different from the previous one and every pain is different from the previous one but we grow with the pain we hopefully one day we're gonna bump into someone who's gonna pick up all those hard pieces and put them back together and heal you heal me heal the world and make it a better place but yeah i, get, I hope you get what i'm saying like the more people will try obviously you're not gonna date everyone on, on earth but the more chances we give ourselves to try love, to try, to always give it a try, the more chances we have at finding that person who understands you, gets you the person that is made for you, okay? And stop looking for soulmates, because I found my soulmate. My soulmate is my best friend, and I don't think I have a romantic soulmate and I've made peace with that and should I bump into him somewhere in the future great like that would be beautiful but right now I've I've learned how to be okay with myself and to love myself and that's why I'm saying I'm not looking forward to my next relationship but if it happens, it happens. I'm not going to deny myself that opportunity of experiencing something so beautiful. Love is a beautiful thing, so I would never stop myself from experiencing something that beautiful. I would rather... Okay, no. I was about to say I would rather be broke and in love than rich and lonely, but... Shall... No. <laughs> Let's be rich in love together. So yeah, man, that's it for today's video. Give yourselves a chance at love, no matter how many fucking times you get hurt. Get yourself up, dust yourself off, and try again. Yes, give yourself the break or time to cry and heal and everything, but do not fucking give up. Don't give up on your dreams, don't give up on yourself, and don't give up on love. That's it from me, Z Love. If you, if you liked today's video, please go down below, hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell so YouTube can notify you every time that I post a video. I'll see you motherfucker next time. That's it for today's video.